female boss accused of molesting cook inside nonprofit's kitchen. Let's get into it. A female boss sexually assaulted a cook by masturbating him inside the kitchen of a nonprofit residential facility for the needy, a new lawsuit claims. Dwayne Lewis says his abuse at the hands of Jewish Board of Family and Children's Services, Inc. Supervisor Kimberly, I can't pronounce her last name, also included the boss hitting his butt with a towel in front of a co-worker and rubbing her breast against him while at work, according to Manhattan Supreme Court lawsuit filed Tuesday morning. The 51-year-old 51 51-year-old Bronx man who began working at the Abraham Residence branch of the Jewish Board in Carnegie Hill in 2018 claims things got out of hand when Kimberly cornered him in the residence's kitchen on October 16th and asked him if his wife sexually satisfies him. The suit says. Kimberly then allegedly pulled down the zipper of his pants and grabbed his penis and stroked it and physically sexually attacked the plaintiff on the premises and caused him to ejaculate, the suit claims. The married father of five told the Post that as a kid he was molested by two family members and he froze up because of his former trauma. It had me in a daze, Lewis said. At the October 16th incident, I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. It opened up a door to my past that I tried so hard to bury. It caused problems in my household because my wife wants to know why we aren't being as intimate as we were, Lewis said. And Lewis was generally forced to work in a sexually charged environment, the suit alleges, adding that employees drank on the job and also had sex with coworkers and social workers. Lewis had already spoken to the company about Kimberly's sexual harassment before the October incident, but the Jewish board was investigating another male employee's complaint against her. Let's read that again. Lewis had already spoken to the company about Kimberly's sexual harassment before the October incident, and the Jewish board was investigating another male employee's complaint against her. Okay? Then November 7th, Lewis filed a formal complaint of his own, the court documents say. And in the wake of his complaint, Lewis was suspended November 13th after a bogus investigation was opened up on him, the suit claims. The lawsuit says next month, Lewis discovered that someone had reported to the New York State Justice Center for Protection of People with Special Needs that he had abused a resident of the facility, which houses formerly homeless people with mental disabilities, according to the Jewish Board's website. Lewis's lawyer, Mark Sheerhan, said his client vehemently denies these false allegations that have been made against him. I've been suspended for two months, Lewis said. They took my kids Christmas away. I wasn't able to buy them anything. Kimberly was also suspended, Sheerhan said. Mr. Lewis is one of several men who complains about sexually harassing behavior in the workplace perpetrated by Kimberly, Sheerhan said. The Jewish board failed to take any action and allowed my client to become a victim. Reached by phone, Kimberly said, it's all lies and there's no proof that I did anything. Kimberly would not confirm whether she was still suspended and declined to comment any further. We don't comment on pending litigation, said the Jewish board. I searched everywhere for this woman's picture. I can't find it. But her name is Kimberly and her last name is spelled O apostrophe G B A. Right. And as I started looking it up, a lot of Nigerian names came up, which is interesting to me because you're trying to tell me that a Nigerian woman working at the Jewish center not only committed sexual harassment against multiple employees, but then they figured out ways to fire the employees to cover up for her. I find that hard to believe that they will go through all that trouble and possible lawsuits for a Nigerian woman. Um, but you never know. So I'm going to use this to segue to uh, Lonnie Love. Who got on TV and talked about black men not being able to have faithful relationships. I wanna, you know, I don't speak for the black community, but I do think that a lot of black men they really don't know how to have true, faithful relationships. They think because they have money, 
because they have power that they can treat women any kind of way. Lonnie Love is saying things. And that <laughs> is something we need to work on. We need to work on uh, that. That together. money and power does not mean that you I can guess. just do whatever you want to do. I think sadly in so many cultures, that is the whole yes. machismo thing. Like, yes. that is... That yes. goes across the board, but I, I'm going to no, say... No, it's not across the board because what is happening is that we are still dealing with the point of uh, slavery and we are descendants of slavery. Mm -hmm. And because our families were broken up, we still do not have an idea of how yes. to have together families because our families were broken up. Yes, and until that. we really From start... Skipping over all of the other men that cheat like a mug... Um, of other races. Uh, here we have one who not only said no, but was assaulted and then lost his job all so he could be faithful to his wife. Now, I'm going to give some personal insight. You know, every y'all all know I'm single. I have my issues with dating. I hate it. But I could never ever think that out of all the races that my man, the black man, is the worst. Because let me tell you something, honey. <laughs> White women have a lot to deal with, okay? They trading them in for newer models all the time. They'll leave you and marry your sister and then now you got to live in the family with your ex-husband as your sister's husband. Your kids is now cousin kids. Sisters, whatever. I mean, I feel like when people say things like this, they're extremely naive. I, I, I don't want to say naive. Naive is too nice. Like, you have never lived around any other people, any other cultures. You have never seen other women crying because their man did them something. You've only seen that with black women. Now, come on, girl. You want to show with four women? You mean to tell me? And you want to talk about men with money? Matt Lauer allegedly was locking bitches in his office and sodomizing them, allegedly. He had a trap door. You walk in his office, he had a button, allegedly. You press the button, you trapped in his office, you can't get out. So he let you out. Okay? So, you want to sit here and talk about black men. Did, did you never take a Saturday and watch Lifetime? No, Lifetime used to traumatize me when I was a child. Right, when I was a teenager. Like, you ever sat there and watched Life? Just, just take a Saturday or Sunday and watch Lifetime. Watch all the true life stories of the husbands whooping their wives ass, beating their kids ass, stalking, killing, getting away with it, getting a new bitch, trading in the new girl, sodomizing children, all kind of shit. Watch Lifetime for a weekend. And watch them true life stories on there. Now, like I said, I'm single. And dating is traumatizing. It freaking sucks. I hate every minute of it. It's at the point now where I'm just like, Ugh. okay. But I'm not going to sit there and put that on black men. That's... It all sucks till you meet the one that you're in harmony with, right? 